Before we get to the start, less than 9% of women are ever killed by a stranger. This means that passion is the motivation behind a majority of violent acts. But why is this? Sometimes it is jealousy or fear, but sometimes a crime of passion is completely spontaneous. However, the sad truth is that women are more often the target of these crimes than men, and Carol Maltese was one of them. Now, you must be thinking, who is Carol Maltese? Isn't this video about Charlotte Angie? Well, to everyone's surprise, both are the same person. Carol Maltese was born in 1995 of Italian-Dutch origins. She grew up in Sesto Caliente in the province of Varese. She had then moved to Milan where she worked as a saleswoman in a perfume shop. Due to the pandemic, she was not able to earn, which ultimately forced her to switch paths. She started uploading adult content to OnlyFans, which assisted her access to the world of the adult film industry. Her stage name was Charlotte Angie, which is also the name she's famous for. Angie, who was 26 years old, also had a six-year-old child living in Rescaldina with a relative. In addition to the open profile on OnlyFans, now inactive, the young woman showed herself on social media as a model and influencer. On Instagram, boasted over 35,000 followers. Later, the published pictures would help catch her killer. The culprit of the crime, David Fontana, a 43-year-old Italian bank employee whose hobbies included photography and blogging about food and travel, bought a freezer from Amazon in January this year. He also bought an axe and a hacksaw. His order history on the online platform also included a brazier, which he later returned because it didn't work for him. It was a trail of business transactions that were necessary for an operation that lasted three days, which we will get to in a while. Fontana and Angie lived in Rescaldina, part of the metropolitan city of Milan, but they had met in a Milan hotel in October of 2020, during the peak of the coronavirus pandemic. He said in a report, I used to work in a bank, but I love photography. I met her through Instagram and I took pictures of her in her underwear. Their affair progressed and the two started meeting regularly. Fontana and Angie used to record their intercourse, which used to be very hardcore. However, the affair was short-lived, but it is believed that the two still used to see each other, possibly because Maltese was in desperate need of money. On a date that is yet to be determined, between January 10th and 11th, Fontana killed Carol Maltese, aka Charlotte Angie, with no apparent motive. That day, they recorded two films in the actress's home. The first, which was less aggressive, was still on the killer's iPhone. The second, which saw Maltese's life end, was deleted. What's crazier is Fontana actually gave the details of his heinous crime, stating, she was tied up on a stripper bar and she had a bag over her head. I started to hit her all over her body with a hammer, but not very hard. I'm not sure why. I don't know what happened to me. I think that she was already dead. I didn't know what to do, and I cut her throat with a kitchen knife. I spent half an hour looking at her, and then I went home. These are the words of a psychotic killer. The killer first tried to set fire to her unsuccessfully. After freezing her body and dismembering her with the tools he had bought on Amazon, he tidied the house. Then he stuck the trash bags containing her remains in the freezer. More than two months later, he put the body in the trunk of his car and drove 120 kilometers to the mountains of Borno, where he had left it. That day, he calmly returned to his life. It is quite disturbing to know that no one knew where she was or asked about her for the past two months. On March 20th, a 60-year-old man who was walking in the area found Maltese's corpse. Her body parts were scattered around. Her face was burned and in a state of decomposition that made it hard for the police to identify her. It was only possible to do so thanks to her 15 tattoos, images of which were published by authorities in a bid to establish her identity. And because she was a well-known actress, a number of the actress's fans got in touch to alert them as to who she was. Fontana continued to use the victim's phone and answer the messages she received. He managed to deal with her relative's questions. Fontana also paid the dead woman's rent. The bank clerk allegedly sent a text to Maltese's mother saying that she had left the adult film industry but was too busy to explain why. 
He is also reported to have sent kinky messages to her boyfriend, who lives in Holland. Despite the alleged cover-up attempts, Maltese was reported missing after failing to turn up to an event at a lap dancing club earlier. Fontana also got a call from a journalist who had information about the identity of the body found. This man was Andre Tortelli. He called her acquaintances who shared images and told him that the woman had a young son who was reportedly living with a male relative. Tortelli told The Telegraph, I thought to myself, what are the odds that all this coincides? The physical description and that this woman has eight of the same tattoos? But I didn't want to go to the police until I was sure. Tortelli tried to reach Maltese via WhatsApp and surprisingly received a reply. Obviously, this was Fontana pretending to be the dead woman, and he replied, A number of people have told me about that girl. Fortunately, I am fine. The journalist told The Telegraph that the only person who would reply pretending to be a dead woman is the person who killed her. So, basically, there was an assassin on the loose. That's when he took the case to the police. When Fontana realized that the police were closing in on him, he made an official report of her disappearance. However, detectives who claimed to have spotted inconsistencies in his story began tracking his movements over recent months. Video surveillance archives showed Fontana and Maltese getting into her car in January. And according to police, a search of his home uncovered bin bags like those used to wrap her dismembered body, along with DNA evidence linking Fontana to the murder. When confronted with the evidence, Fontana broke down and confessed his involvement with Angie and that he accidentally killed her during a consensual meeting, which the authorities didn't trust at all. Fontana was arrested on charges of aggravated first-degree homicide, dismemberment, and concealing a corpse. He is expected to appear in court for a preliminary hearing for his grisly murder, The Telegraph reported. 25 women have been murdered in Italy this year alone. Maltese herself had published a video on November 25th on her private Instagram account denouncing the psychological abuse suffered by women. She said, I have lived through this in my small personal reality. There is a lot of talk about physical violence, but psychological violence is important too because that is what destroys you. We just hope the killer gets the justice he deserves and is put behind bars for life. That's it for today, folks. Let us know in the comments what you think about this crime story and what will happen to David Fontana. Don't forget to like the video and also share it with your friends. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for your regular dose of whodunits. Until then, stay safe, stay warm, and don't get any crazy ideas.